Hello everyone, welcome to today's October Plan With Me video. The theme for this month is from one of my favourite films of all time and an obsession that I've had since its release back in 1993, Tim Burton's Nightmare Before Christmas. Everything that I'm doing in my bullet journal today, I am drawing and painting, so it'll be quite labour intensive. I'm also going to be using quite a lot of different materials, all of which are listed in the description. So with all that said, before I crack on, I'm going to need lots of coffee. Starting with a cover page, I masked off the edges of my notebook with some washi tape before I started painting so that I have a nice clean border when I finished. So for my cover page, I wanted to recreate the iconic landmark, the Spiral Hill, which stands in the graveyard of Halloween Town and leads to the Hinderlands. You know, the place where Jack stumbles across the trees with holiday doors. It's such a prominent location inside the film where many major events happen. This is where Jack expresses his longing for something more than Halloween before heading off to the Hinderlands. Sally expresses her hidden feelings for Jack while singing Sally's song. And also at the end of the film when Jack returns to Halloween Town, both physically and spiritually, and where he realises that he and Sally are in love. So anywho, I'm using my Daniel Smith watercolours and my Van Gogh watercolour palette for this painting. I'm underpainting the pumpkins in yellow first before adding the orange in an attempt to make the pumpkins look like they're illuminated. Now, I intended to use this Nightmare Before Christmas font throughout the whole of the month spread, but I don't know why I struggled with it and it took ages. So I ended up using something later on that's a lot more quicker and a lot more simple. So with the cover page almost finished, all that's left for me to do is add some faces and color to the jack-o'-lanterns and add some shading and highlights to the gravestones and trees and also lots of discombobulated sketchy lines that Tim Burton is so famous for. Then last but not least, my favorite bit, removing the washi tape. For this month's calendar page, I'm doing a standard grid with each day being five dots by five and then two dots by five for the space at the top for the days of the week. I'm then framing it with Burton-esque style swirls and then painting patterns to imitate Sally's dress. I did intend to add the title of October in the Nightmare Before Christmas font at the bottom within the frame, but I changed my mind in fear of it looking too busy. So moving on to October's bucket list. 
I want you to create what I imagine Sally's potion cupboard would look like and have the labels of each item note the different experiences I'd love to achieve this month. There are a couple of things that I'm bringing forward from September's list that we didn't get the opportunity to do due to the whole household, with the exception of my husband going down with a beer bug and being stuck at home feeling pretty rubbish for a good couple of weeks. So I want to paint this whole page, so I add a background, and while I'm waiting for that to dry, I move on to the other page and I'm going to quickly do a simple line a day spread. I'm using koi brush pens to add some grey tones and a hint of colour, and then finished with the title and a couple of jackets. Halloween has always been a big deal in our house, but this year my two youngest kids, they're aged nearly three and one, will actually get to experience it properly for the first time. What we locked down last year and the previous year was actually my wedding day. This will be their first normal Halloween and I can't wait. Let me know in the comments what are your guys' plans for Halloween this year and what are you dressing up as? So for my Habit Tracker page, I'm going to do five separate grids with boxes for the dates, measuring two dots by two. And I'm going to use the Koi Brush Tip Pens again for the title. Now, I don't know how I managed this, but I made a huge error of adding an extra row to each grid. So to rectify my mistakes, I used the darkest washi tape I had to hide them. So to finish off this spread, I'm going to add Zero because he's just so adorable. You can't have a Nightmare Before Christmas theme without him. So like last month, I'm using a sleep tracker and two different mood trackers. One mood tracker being more simple and functional and the other being more visual and fun. So for the fun mood tracker, I had to have Oogie Boogie in one of my month spreads. He is the main antagonist in the film. He is the infamous boogeyman depicted as a bug-filled burlap sack with a penchant for gambling. He is both feared and detested for his ghastly nature, cannibalistic appetite, and rivalry with the pumpkin king, Jack Skellington. So I drew 31 different kinds of beasties for each of the 31 days of October and chose bright colors for each of these moods I wanted to track in the hopes that it will end up looking somewhat like the scene in the film where Oogie's stitching comes undone. I wanted to try and incorporate as many of the different characters from Halloween Town in this month's spread as I could, and not just focus on the obvious ones. So for my social media growth trackers, I chose to do the town there. I wanted to create a monochrome vibe for these two pages. I used two different shades of grey brush tip pens and fine liners for the first. And on the other, I'm doing a quote page. I used a Tombow Fudenosuke, I hope that's how you say it, hard tip pen for the detailed areas and text, 
and Windsor and Newton Indian Ink for the rest. So I found this quote by the genius Tim Burton. Visions are worth fighting for. Why spend your life making someone else's dreams? This quote really resonated with me. After all the weirdness of this last year and a bit, I began to reevaluate a few things of my life and at the same time I also revived my passion for creativity, which I had put on the back burner for far too long. When my maternity leave was coming to an end and I didn't want to have to leave my babies going back to working ridiculous hours for hardly any pay for a job that just could replace you in a heartbeat. So I made the decision to ignore my negative thoughts of not being good enough and just began to create and just put my stuff out there and see what happens. I'm also incredibly lucky to be in a position that I have a wonderfully supportive husband that has more than encouraged me to pursue my dreams of, of working for myself. Now I've moved on to my book page. I had a tiny bit of bleed through from the ink that I'd used on the previous page, so I added some ripped black cardstock to hide it. So I'm just adding a simple sketch of Jack reading because it's apt for this spread. After I finish the quick little sketch of Jack, I start adding some grey tones with the koi pen again, just to add a little bit of colour. I then used a Jelly Roll white gel pen and drew stripes on the black paper like Jack's suit. And then used some scraps from an old book and a previous craft paper notebook, which I printed using some rubber stamps and an ink pad. A brain dump page. I thought it made sense to have an image of Dr. Finkelstein scratching his brains for this page, right? And I didn't want to miss out his assistant, Igor. So, question Halloween, do you guys love it or do you hate it? And do you watch Nightmare Before Christmas at Halloween, Christmas, or both? Personally, I don't have to have any reason to watch it, and neither do my children. So, I'm now on my final two pages. Because the first week is only three days, I added another picture quote page. This time, featuring Lock, Shock and Barrel, also known as Boogie's Boys. The naughty trio of trick-or-treaters from Halloween Town and Oogie Boogie's henchmen. Locke is the leader of Boogie's Boys, wearing a devil costume and a mouth full of pointy teeth and hair waxed into two horns. Shock, a little witch, the most cunning and most intellectual and the only female of Oogie's minions. Barrel, the most stupid of the three troublemakers, sporting a skeleton costume and oddly shaped feet. So for this image I'm using a mixture of standard watercolour paints and some watercolour pencils which I've never used in my book before. Also my Tombow pen and some fine liners. To make this a quote page I add the line from the song This is Halloween, life's no fun without a good scare. So I'm on to my first weekly spread. I'm just going to keep it nice and simple and add some Burton-esque style borders adorned with some spider webs and of course the big man himself, Jack Skellington. So as I'm almost done, I just wanted to get in an apology for this video coming out so ridiculously late. I have had a nightmare with things breaking lately and the laptop charger was another victim of this run of bad luck. We had to wait for Royal Mail to send us our new charger, which took way longer than expected. And then when it finally came, did the audio, lost everything. So I did think about not bothering uploading this video, but too much time was spent on it for me not to. 
hopefully November's video will not have issues and will be uploaded on schedule at the end of the month. So guys, let me know what you think. Which was your favorite page? I think mine was the cover page and Lock, Shock and Barrel. I was quite pleased with how they turned out. If you're interested in seeing the following weekly spreads and which characters I end up creating, then I will be posting them on my Instagram account. Go and check them out. And whilst I'm on the subject, if you like what you saw in this video, please give it a like. And if you want to support my art, then please hit the subscribe button to keep you updated for future content. to say is thank you so much for watching my video um, and have a safe spooky and very happy halloween bye